So now we can look at some properties of matter. And so we have physical and chemical properties. We can also break these down into intensive and extensive properties. So physical property is something that's just there all the time. You can observe it without having to change a substance into another substance. So something like just observing its color, its volume, its mass, density. And density is just mass over volume. Density is mass over volume. We'll look at that in the next section. Um, boiling point is also a physical property. So that gets a little confusing because what's happening when you're boiling something, you're going from you know, a liquid to a gas. So suppose you had liquid water, now you're turning it into gaseous water. Um, it's, physical, it's a physical change. This is a physical property. You're not creating anything new. You're just changing the state of matter. So all of these states of matter, um, these, these points, freezing point, boiling point, those are all just physical properties because you're not making anything new. You have water gas, that liquid, and they turn it into a, a water gas. Chemical properties are things that you can only observe when you make a new substance. So only observe when you change something into another substance. These are the ones that sound kind of dangerous. Uh, flammability, corrosiveness, does it react with, it, with an acid? Um, so all of those things, you know, does it, does it burst into flames? Um, it, does it corrode? Is it um, un undergoing any kind of redox reaction, oxidation? Um, and then does it react with a react right there? <laughs> Reactivity, if there's a reaction going on there for a chemical property. Um, intensive versus extensive properties really depend on, you know, does it does the amount of substance that you have matter? So an intensive property is independent of the amount, so intensive, independent of the amount of substance that you have. So density is an intensive property. Anytime you have like a ratio of extensive properties, then you have um, an intensive property. So density is the mass over volume. So if you increase the mass, you're also going to increase the volume. So um, it doesn't really matter how much you have because you you have a ratio of these two things, so you can't really increase the, the mass without the volume for um, something like this. So density is intensive. Boiling point is also um, intensive. You know, what's the boiling point of um, a gallon of water? You know, it's 100 degrees Celsius. What's the boiling point of one milliliter of water? Also um, 100 degrees Celsius. So it doesn't depend on how much you have. That boiling point, that 100 degrees Celsius, is still going to be the same whether you have a gallon or you have a milliliter of it. It may take longer to boil a gallon of water versus a milliliter of water, but that's, that's a time thing. That It's still boiling at the same point. Um, extensive properties, they do depend on the amount of substance that you have. So energy, uh, mass, volume, right? So if you have more mass, then um, you have more substance present, right? If you have a greater volume, you have more substance present. Uh, so extensive properties depend on the amount of substance that you have. Physical changes um, versus chemical changes. So again, chemical, you're making something new. You have a new substance. Physical, you're just um, you're just changing that matter, uh, changes in the matter that don't change the composition. So phase changes, right? If you're evaporating water, you're freezing water, changes of state, uh, you're not creating a new substance. So you're taking liquid water and turning it into gaseous water. Um, you can change the temperature of that water, right? If you, but you still have water, you haven't created anything new. Um, and same with the volume. But chemical changes, you're making something new. So you have some kind of reaction. And in chapter four, we're gonna start talking about different types of reactions. You can have a combustion reaction oxidation, decomposition, all of these things are chemical changes because you're creating a new substance. So let's see if we can answer some of these questions. Um, you know, which ones are physical, which ones are chemical changes? So plants make sugar from carbon dioxide and water. So that's what photosynthesis, um, you know, you're making a new thing, you're making sugar. So that's a chemical change. Uh, water vapor, uh, water vapor in the air forms frost. So now you're just, this is just a, a change of state, right? A phase change. You have water, um, that's a gas, uh, and now you're forming you know, solid water. Um, so this would be just a physical change because you still have water. You're not creating anything new. You're not creating a new um, compound. It's water to water. A goldsmith melts a nugget of gold and pulls it into a wire. So you had solid gold and now you have uh, a nugget of gold. Now you have a um, a wire of gold. So it's still gold, it's just a physical change. If you have um, mixtures, you know, you, sometimes you want to be able to separate them. There's a lot of different ways to separate mixtures, and some of these you probably have done before. Um, filtration, so maybe you have a coffee maker, and you can, you have, um, I used to have like filter paper, 
and you can separate things based um, separate the solids from the, the, the liquids and solutions. So you can you can separate things based on you know their their phase of matter. The solid will you know that you have filter paper has like little pores. Uh, water will go right through it, but the the um, coffee part won't. Uh, so it kind of gets stuck there. Um, what else do we have? Distillation. Distillation is how you can separate substances based on their boiling points. And so this is how you make, um, actually the first lab that you do in organic chemistry, if you're taking organic chemistry, you'll, you'll do a distillation. You're going to separate things based on their boiling points. This is also how you can make moonshine. So when you make moonshine, um, you have, you start off with kind of a mixture of methanol and ethanol. So methanol looks like this and ethanol looks like this. And the ethanol is bigger, right? There's more carbons, there's more hydrogens, there's more atoms in there, so it's bigger. Um, it has stronger intermolecular forces, which means it's going to take more energy to turn it from a, uh, a liquid to a gas, right? Which is what you're doing when you're boiling. So what you do is you have this mixture in a, in a little flask. You heat it up, and eventually it starts to boil. And what's boiling is the methanol, the smaller one. It has a lower boiling point. It doesn't take as much energy to separate those molecules and turn them into from a liquid to a gas. And so when you do that, it boils. It goes up this column. Now you have a gas up here, um, and then it gets uh, filtered into here. Um, and what you do is you want to turn it back into a liquid. And so you can just kind of run cold water around this. You have like a condensing chamber here. Cold water will turn it from, you change the temperature, right? So now you're going from a gas to back to a liquid. And so you can separate the two liquids that way. So you heat up, you heat it up. The one with the lower boiling point will come out first. And then um, you can collect it. If you want to heat the rest of it up to get it out, it should be fine. Um, if, that's, if those are the only two things that you have in there, then, then you should be able to separate your mixture. This only really works when the boiling points are, um, you know, a, different enough that you can you can see a difference in when they're boiling so that's distillation chromatography is when you can you can separate things based on their solubility in a solvent so suppose you have a sample here it has a, a mixture you have two different molecules in there or two different um, yeah, compounds whatever and you have a stationary phase um, eventually you know one might be more might have stronger interactions or weaker interactions with this particular phase and it'll move through so this is your mobile phase this is what you're trying to separate um, you'll get the, um, in, in there is what you're trying to separate, you'll get, you know, it, it, they'll come out at different times pretty much is what you'll, you'll do. Uh, so chromatography, you'll do some of this in organic chemistry as well.